அறிவிலே சிறந்த மேடை அரசியல் அறிந்த ஞானியே நெறியிலே சிறந்த செல்வ நாயகன் நேர்மையாளன் பொறுமையே உருவமான புண்ணியமூர்த்தியாலே சிறுமைகள் நீங்கி தமிழினம் நிமிந்து வாழும் Sri Lanka 1948 to 1977 in a time of turmoil and upheaval a new tamil leader emerged a gentleman politician an embodiment of integrity humility and quiet strength a leader who unified all tamil speaking people northern eastern hill country and tamil speaking muslims under the umbrella of the federal party a man of god who stood for peace tande selva oru saratram avar oru sahatham avaru oru theerkudarsi he was a respected as a gentleman not because of his christianity or hinduism or anything he was an outstanding gentleman who people trusted physically he was a quite a small big person but mentally he was a very very strong person a strong as steel within his fold there was not simply uh, jaffna tamils there were people uh, who belonged to the eastern uh, uh, tamil fraternity then there were muslims who were tamil speaking the up country tamils uh, who had an indian origin so he brought together all these different uh, uh, formations under one umbrella was uh, he had moral authority you know he had huge huge integrity uh, people would come and they would uh, prostrate themselves on the floor in front of him uh, so they would sort of fall on the ground and touch his feet uh, everywhere he went he he sort of met adulation and without knowing anything about it at the time i guess i guess that's what charisma is he was a man of god who believed who believed that everything is done according to god's plans with him at the helm of tamil politics an era of non-violent protest for tamil rights began parliamentary agitation civil disobedience and satyagraha were his answers to the colonization of tamil areas singhale only act standardization and other acts perceived as singhale domination that threatened the rights of the tamil speaking minorities he uh, really uh, brought the tradition of gandhi in uh, uh, politics uh, into uh, the struggles of the tamil people and uh, he adopted an attitude of non violence his approach was both to use parliament and also to leverage it through political pressure outside which had to be non violent political pressure they were at the receiving end in 56 when the official languages bill was brought and people even uh, non tamil saw them as a victim the civil disobedience campaigns i think went on for a long time 50 60s uh well i be, i believe that it was one of the best ways of getting the tamil people's rights rather than using violence uh, but it didn't work much because each government try, tried to do something about it and at that time the federal party was without any doubt the chief interlocutor on the tamil people's side a democratic interlocutor and uh, they would come to some agreement and then the other party in opposition as we you know we have a biparty system other party would oppose it just for very narrow political gains and uh, then that would used to be shelved and it went on like that they were successful in the sense that they focused attention on what they say for instance 
द वोट इम्पोर्टेंट देन सिंगल ओनली बिफोर दैट द डिसएडवांटेजमेंट ऑफ पीपल then standardization these are all things aimed against the tamils this four part series documents the origins of the tamil struggle for rights a dignified gandhian struggle of gentlemen politicians and a principled tamil speaking public who remained devoted to non violent methods even in the face of harsh retaliation in the form of cruel beatings and imprisonments the first and the important satyagraha campaign that was carried on by mr tande chelvanayakam and his party was the satyagraha campaign at call for his green it was well planned one the tamil people and the tamil speaking people they gathered at call for his green at a particular time we only did went and sat there none of us had any weapon and tande chelvanayakam sought to he spoke to everyone and about half an hour later we found a big crowd coming towards us we never suspected any violence there but we came there and they came there and started assaulting most of the people who were seated there and from long distance they started throwing stone with the what about the stick that they brought they started hitting us they dragged our uh, um, vanni singham great man he was a bulky man he put him down and started trampling him one by one they started trampling him i felt as if my own father is being trampled like that in front of my eyes they didn't leave with him they started assaulting dr naganathan he was a very strong man they hit and chased him into golfes hotel amdalingam was assaulted and tanda chelva nayakam of course they didn't harm him i was picked and chosen <laughs> four people came held held me by the leg two people by the leg two by the hand thrust me onto the floor and they dragged me and threw me into the beer lake somehow or other the police people who have been there they were able to rescue me and protect me the most uh, saddest or i don't know what to say in front of tande selva his two sons that is manoharan and vasiharan i think their name must be correct uh, they were attacked they were good taken up like a ball and they were throwing tande was sitting very calmly he didn't do anything even as a mother i won't uh, uh, look at this and uh, uh, resist myself and just shortly before that i had passed that way and i'd seen two of these singular uh, racist uh, leaders with a lion flag walking along the golf face one was kmp rajaratna the other was a man from call i think uh, from our country i knew him they were marching at the crowd of a real gang of riff raff and those were the people who attacked the satyagrahis dr naganathan came in late and because everything said all got disturbed and so on about 11 o'clock in the morning parliament was held at 10 and he came in with a bandage round his head i distinctly remember the bandage with a large lot of red spots on on the bandage and he walked in and took his seat on the opposition side and at that point i saw a little uh, flash of ill temper on the part of the prime minister mr mananaike who in a way taunted mr naganan dr naganan said that there he comes which is wounds of war and i felt a little bad at that i i felt i mean that's that's really really rather tough to say where this man had been just beaten and he yet was coming into parliament and you know, mr banana cross say a little bit of a taunt not usually the gentlemanly 
way that Mr. Banana acts, but he acted that way. Under his leadership uh, in 1961, there was a strong Satyagraha campaign in all parts of the northern and eastern provinces. When we succeeded in crippling the government administration in all the uh, government agents' offices uh, called the Kacheris uh, in the north and the east, thousands of people took part in the Satyagraha campaign. No question about it. In every one of these places, Tande Selva played an active role in that campaign. Many of us were arrested and detained at the Panagura army camp some months after the campaign commenced. Uh, Tande Selva was also one of them. He remained in the army camp for a few days, but in view of his uh, ill health, he was um, kept under house arrest at his house in Colombo. As quite a young person, I was also arrested uh, along with Tande Selva. Uh, at the Panagura army camp. If I had responsibility in government uh, and some, somebody was asking for his rights, I mean not everyone agreed with their demands, but if they were doing it in a peaceful manner through Satyagraha, I wouldn't have certainly allowed the forces to forces or anybody at all to attack them. It remembers an untold story that was forgotten, overshadowed by the Tamil militant movement and the ensuing bloody civil war. In an attempt to learn from past mistakes. This documentary series moves on to discuss why non-violent Gandhian methods that succeeded in India and South Africa got overtaken by a militant struggle in Sri Lanka. Here was a great national leader who was not given the rightful place he should have been given if that was done by our leaders and the people, the tragedies that took place for 30 years would never have happened. I don't believe that he ever wanted to divide this country, from what I remember. One mistake I believed even at that time as a young man was this word federal, which could be interpreted as the uh, first step to separation. That is exactly what they said. When the federal solution was propounded, we actually fitted ourselves into an existing framework. Now, the federal solution was already there. We didn't work out anything which was specific to the, the, the Lankan uh, situation. I think there we made a mistake there because we should have, the Federal Party leadership, particularly the, if not the top leaders, at least the bottom leaders, should have been in touch with the Sinhalese constituency and known their views. And in contrast, Gandhi, uh, Martin Luther King uh, and Mandela went out of their way to reach out to the other. Definitely, Thandai Shelva, or even the TULF leaders at that time, TULF or Federal Party leaders, never advocated violence, never encourage the youngsters uh, to go for violence. But unfortunately what happened is because when we see that nothing can be achieved and uh, through uh, non-violence, uh, rightly or wrongly, a large number of us believe that armed struggle can uh, bring about a solution. Okay, we believed at that time the uh, separate state and uh, especially that uh, after the 1983 massacre uh, riots in Colombo, even I have seen in, in our organization, I have seen parents bring in youngsters and give it to us. Okay, please take this boy <laughs> for your course and train them. That sort of things we have seen because uh, so, so much anger was there at that time. The creation of the armed struggle. I think his sole responsibility is to is the successive governments. Any matter could have been discussed and resolved without allowing it to achieve uh, difficult proportions. That is what he sought to achieve under the Bandaranaika Chilvanaika Pact, which we all hailed as being uh, a solution uh, to the conflict that uh, we were all getting very concerned about. 
And if the Bandaran Naked children are impact, they've been implemented. There could be no question about it. That this country would never have come to this stage. And not only those facts, but the, uh, the overall uh, non-implementation by all successive governments of anything worthwhile to resolve that ethnic question, a political settlement, is because, firstly, uh, the Sinhala leaders always use this uh, as a leverage point to get votes in a very ugly fashion. Secondly, there were very few Sinhala leaders who had the courage to stand up and say to the extremists, you know, uh, you are only a minority. I am convinced that the majority of the Sinhala people I don't think like this. And, uh, and, and tell them that there is a Tamil problem and, and we had to resolve it. They didn't have the courage. This documentary series aims to resolve the following questions by bringing to the table a wide spectrum of Sri Lanka's political leaders and intellectuals and asking them what their community's views and reservations are towards the demands of the Tamil speaking peoples such as a devolution of power, language rights and an equal say in governance. Would compromise by both communities have been a better option and could any of the agreements and pacts be the basis for an acceptable, permanent political solution today? What would they consider to be a just and fair solution to the national question? What I think that Asingara people would ha have accepted uh, uh, and representing them, what I think is in my devolution proposals. So all these questions are answered in that. Now whether they would accept that now is a different matter as I told you, the government is talking a different language to them. From the point of view of minorities that we would say uh, to look at uh, improving on the 13th amendment. It's best for us to stick to what is there and improve on it rather than looking at something altogether new. Because it's part of the constitution. It is not a favour for the uh, being done to the Tamils. It's part of the constitution of Sri Lanka. So the government must implement it and implement it fully. You know, while I believe the 13th Amendment is a very...